All right, everybody, we're here in the basement, the studio, Pinecone Studios. John Simmons here with uh, Kyle Hebert, uh, the newest signed player for the St. Louis City, man. How you doing? Really good. Thanks for having me on, John. Yeah, this is awesome. So you are a defender, right? What's your position actually called? Yeah, center back or central defender. Yeah, so you just got signed up to the – so St. Louis, for those who don't know, I'm in St. Louis, we're in St. Louis, and the city – you know, a few years ago expanded into soccer, right? So they, they have a team called the St. Louis City. Their first pro season has not started, but you've been playing on like the uh, Division Two. What, what is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So people always ask me like, ah, oh, so like, are you a pro right now? Or what's going on yeah. with the new signing? It's like, yeah, so I have been. And so they did kind of like an aggregated um, release of teams. So even before I got here in the fall of 2021, yeah. they started some of their academy teams. I think maybe just two, U17s and U16s. And then in the beginning of 2022, a brand new league was launched as the feeder system for the MLS, which is the top league across North America called MLS Next Pro. And uh, I got signed straight out of college, MLS Next Pro, um, was able to play a ye this year, have a great time. Um, we, we got a fantastic team um, and then get signed part of the way through this year for the MLS first team, um, which is coming in 2023 and is going to play in the big stadium downtown oh that's so exciting so any, if anybody's at local you maybe have driven by the new brand new big old stadium they have produced i've not been inside of it yet obviously because we haven't played a, a real game in there yet but uh how exciting man people kids especially boys often dream of like i'm gonna grow up and i'm gonna play pro sports and you were like living that dream yeah yeah no it's uh it's crazy looking back because it was it was something people would say oh uh, like, what do you want to do when you're, what do you, what are you going to do when you're older? Cause I want to, I'm going to play pro soccer and I'd be like seven, eight years old. And they would think, uh, oh, you're just like every other seven and eight year old boy out there. Um, and it used to really bother me. It used to really drive me. Um, and I think God put it on my heart at a young age. And yeah. actually funny enough, my, my wife Cass is yeah. upstairs watching your kids yeah. right now as we're doing this interview, but we were talking about it. And she said, like, if God was going to call you to something, to be a pro soccer player, he has to call you at a young age because you need to get started early. He, he, he can't call you at 12, 13 years old. Um, well, I guess he could. I'm not putting yeah, a limit. Sure, sure, sure. I, I don't want to put a limit on God. Right. Here, yeah. But I'm just saying like he I believe he called me from a very young age. that That's what I was going to do. And he put it on um, my heart and, um, you know, really helped drive me. Yeah. A lot of different things to unpack in that. So we see your shirt, uh, Canada here. Uh, so you are not a U.S. citizen, or I'm you not. are now, but you weren't born that way. Uh, green card holder, so yes. <laughs> permanent resident, not U.S. citizen yet. Yeah. So uh, you grew up in Canada. So soccer in Canada does not sound like those two things match together very often. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's mostly hockey. Um, growing up, Canada is very diverse. People coming in from all different countries, and so typically people from different countries, like soccer, is number one yeah. in I don't know how many countries around the world. So I, I was incredibly blessed when I grew up playing. Like I was playing with people from all over the world and got to form some incredible friendships and relationships doing that. Yeah. So your parents, so who, how did you get into it? Uh, I always say my parents were just too cheap to buy all the hockey equipment. Dude, tell me about that for a second because I, my my brother he has he has a uh, two uh, well he has two children. One of the both of them played soccer, and he was telling me they spent eight hundred dollars on just the shirts. I was like, they kick a ball. What are you doing? Eight hundred dollars. <laughs> hey, that's the way America does it. That's not the way. That's not the okay. way we were doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so your parents were too cheap to buy the hockey mask and the and the pads and the stick and all that, right? Yeah, I mean, hockey sticks, when you buy, like, you got wood and you got, I think, composite. And the composite one's the one that bends more, so everyone yeah. always wants it. But they're a couple hundred bucks, and, you know, if it gets slashed, like, that stick's broken. So you can go through a couple sticks a game. It's just <laughs> soccer. So you played a little bit? Uh, I'll, I'll not, ne never organized. Just yeah. uh, just for fun on the river do with you, friends. Were you born with ice skates in Canada? Like, do they just teach everybody as soon as you're, you know, three years old, get out there? <laughs> uh, like, I would go skating with friends and yeah. stuff, um, but but not too much. I think uh, I was really excited for soccer. And I did a lot of other sports too. Hockey is also very seasonal. Um, ice is expensive to rent, so if you're not, if you don't have a space yourself yeah. um, during the winter, then it's 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 harder access than you know pretty much any other sport. Yeah, I can imagine. So what I what I envision when you say I'm playing soccer in Canada, even though you said sort of like uh, you were able to travel around and do lots of different things. 
I sort of pictured like your first game or your first practice in soccer of Canada. Sort of like, you remember the Mighty Ducks, right? You've probably seen the Mighty Ducks movies, you know? The sort of the ragtag group of people from all over the city, they show up. It's like, these are the people who did, couldn't play hockey. It's like, you know, the six people in Canada who are like, you know what, let's kick a ball around each other. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm picturing. I'm sure it was nothing mm. like that, but that's, and, and, but nonetheless, you came out of that. So tell me, so like, when you first started playing, was it something you enjoyed right away? Was it uh, something that you took to? Yeah, I mean, loved it, loved it from the get go. Um, always wanted to. I feel like as a kid, I never got enough of being competitive and doing competitive things. I never had. I didn't have a brother. My oh. sister and I would compete in in board games and card games, which I still love to do a lot of now. But it's yeah. like it's almost like that that drive was in there um, for me to want to like everything. I always wanted to be a competition in school and sports. It's like I could never quite get enough, no matter what I yeah. did. And so that's what I loved about soccer. It's just like just an outlet. So you know? it was was it was soccer competitive at a young age? Uh probably started getting more competitive when I was twelve or thirteen. Yeah, like through the uh, younger ages, less less so. I mean, it was more. You know, you're just having fun, your yeah. kids and stuff. Um, was the the game itself interesting to you, or just the competitive nature of sports? Uh probably competitive nature of sports, and then it's, I mean, especially as a kid, once you become good at something. You know, I think back to the kid, like there's certain things I wouldn't want to try because I knew I was bad at it. You know, like I didn't want to, I wouldn't want to sing in, in the choir because I knew I couldn't sing. Yeah. So I just wouldn't do it. And so the things you, I mean, it still happens with adults now. You still sure. think, hey, I'm bad at this. I don't want to do it. Or look embarrassed. <laughs> or look embarrassed. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of fears out there. But once you, I think you start to get good at something, you start to latch on to that. And you're like, ah, I really like this. You yeah. Know, it's something I'm good at. Uh, soccer. So how do you tell that you're good at soccer? Like I can run faster than everybody else. Like I can just block the ball better. Uh, yeah. I mean, you could, uh, especially at a young age. Yeah. I mean, I was scoring a lot of goals. I'm a defender yeah. now. It's like, uh, I remember one time we were, we were seven and we were seven or eight. And we were playing and we, our team was up three, nothing at half. I had three goals and then they had one player less. So I switched teams and then scored three goals for their team. So my parents love that story. It's like, I played myself too. <laughs> To a, to a three three draw. Yeah, <laughs> that's also oh, a draw. So this is my hang up with soccer, because you know, for people who know my story, I was a I was a gambler. I mm -hmm. gambled uh, first first poker, then I moved on and had a heavy sports gambling addiction. And I hated soccer betting because that you could bet the win, the loss, or the draw. Mm -hmm. So it was this like, what do people like soccer for? Like you can't even bet on it. There's a, not necessarily a win or loser. Sometimes you might play a game and nothing happens. Like I feel like it's like a ninety minutes of wasted time. I don't. You probably don't mm -hmm. feel that way. But like, well, tell me about the draw. Yeah, not at all. Completely disagree with <laughs> okay. you on all right, all right, many all right. accounts there. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, you know soccer is more than just. You can start to see. And it's something I've actually learned as I've gotten older. And I, because I used to watch more football growing up, and then now I've, I've changed. Now I love watching soccer. Just the beauty of the game and the movement. And you start to see, like, you just know kind of certain goals, especially are like you just all that's gone into them to make it happen. And it's just so much, you know, first being technical and being clean. Yeah. And then it's also like strategy as well, or just in terms of sucking the opponents out and creating space and then driving into that space and someone gets sucked in and then playing it wide and yeah. then back central and you start to really appreciate. That's why uh, we had some church friends come to a game and uh, we had a, like a really good move from the back to the front where we were connected like 10, 11 passes and we had a really good look and we didn't score. But our you know biggest fans, the Luligans, they were going nuts. Cause ah, like, I've this, seen the Luligans. Yeah, it's like this is quality soccer that they want to watch. And so some of our church friends were saying to Cass, they're like, wait, so you cheer even when they don't score a goal? And so, yeah. So I love people who are passionate about a subject. And so like when you start using your, uh, you know, soccer jargon and it goes right over my head, all that stuff you mm. just said, <laughs> about like passing and all, all the different things you talked about, you know, make it, making, making a look or whatever, you know, mm. uh, when did that become, start becoming part of your vernacular and your, like your understanding of the game? Yeah. I mean, my vernacular is shaped obviously by the, first and foremost the coaches that i've had and yeah. i'm curious because you don't realize it but your mindset and the way you see the game is changing yeah so when i was in high school my mindset was shaped by i did uh like a youth it's kind of a national development camp in manitoba and then that coach ended up taking me on to like youth canada national team tours and so my saw the way i saw the game and he was english so it was shaped by like an english head coach um, I was in, then I went to Missouri state for six years and my soccer knowledge and the way I saw the game was, was shaped by an American head coach who, you know, very disciplined, very organized. 
And then now it's it's similar with St. Louis, but it's also different in terms of more of like a German mindset, just in terms of the way they see the game and the space and, uh, you know, w- what's, a, what's a good play, like, yeah. you know, what what they're trying to get us to do and what that team's principles are. Yeah. Um, but it's like all of that has gone into molding me and the way I see the game now. Yeah. But first and foremost, it's the, these coaches now. And I, well, sometimes like I wish I could – Think about how I thought about the game five years ago. Sure. And I wonder what would have changed because I don't know. You know, yeah. it's, like, it's almost like you've just kind of you you evolve in your mind and as a player over time. Yeah, you, you gain wisdom in that area. You know, mm. soccer is a very multinational sport, so it's like different. Uh, you know, uh, nations will influence different patterns of play and different styles and things like that. You know, much like anything. But for somebody from Canada, you mentioned you went to Missouri State, Missouri Center of America. Yeah. Tell me how this happened. How do you how did you make it here? Yeah, so I was playing uh, well, with the National Development Camp. You know, we were trained before school. And then in the summers, there's, there's a league. It's called USL2. So when you think soccer in North America, there's MLS. And then there's kind of USL Championship. And then about a similar level as MLS Next Pro. Um, and then below USL Championship is USL1. And then below USL1 is USL2. And USL2 is semi-pro so a couple guys will get some money but mostly people are playing as amateurs yeah and so our team in winnipeg it's a north american league though so we're the only team in winnipeg and so during high school ever since i was 15 we would travel to des moines iowa springfield missouri oh, st gotcha. louis chicago um once i realized that hey i want to you know keep playing soccer after high school the university system in the states is so much better than Canada's in terms of like quality of sports okay that's like interesting okay combining you, and you talk to our team was full of international guys at Missouri State if you want to combine athletics and academics no one does it better than America it's just not a possibility to do both at a high level pretty much anywhere else in the world yeah that's a uh, hey chalk one up for America yeah, right? yeah you know yeah. everybody's down on us some days you know but hey we got this worked out a little you guys bit. got that figured <laughs> out I think and that's at least one good reason to go to college I don't mm. know if there's many more uh in this current climate that's just my opinion anyway let's talk about uh uh so you you, you spend a lot of your time uh traveling the midwest because of the this league that you're in or whatever and so you get hooked up and you end up going to college at Missouri State mm. uh what was your experience life when you started spending like uh you know extended periods of time here in the states was it much different than uh the life you had grown up in canada or was it pretty similar yeah i mean at the start it was it was astronomically different like i moved i went from you know where i was very comfortable i knew everybody to a city i knew no one um i had no church family oh, yeah. there were no other believers on the team and when i first got to missouri state in 2015 i had this great plan of, of what i was going to do in terms of sticking around missouri state i was going to say three and a half years I was going to enter the draft. I was going to get drafted. I was going to go to the MLS. I was going to play pro soccer. Oh, vision for your life. Yeah, vision. <laughs> but right before I go to Missouri State, I got injured. Uh-oh. And so, like, that robbed me of my first year. And so the whole first year, I was just trying to get back healthy. And, you know, it was an MCL tear. So it was only supposed to take six to eight weeks. and ended up taking six months. And I was always, when I went to the doctor, I was always two weeks away. So yeah. it's like I was always cleared for, like, just straight line running. So I remember just during <laughs> practice, I would just run. Wow. in a straight line and we you have we were a gps vest so you would track meters you also track high intensity meters so after each session you get to see how many meters did this guy you he, mean inches I'm just kidding. yeah <laughs> no i guess no even in america they use meters for yeah, the gps okay, okay, system okay. so you get to see and our coach was big on it like you got to get the right amount especially the high intensity meters over a certain threshold so you're sprinting but because all i could do was sprint it would be like you'd see the meters after each day it would be like 300 high intensity meters for this guy 400 for this guy, 350, 375, and I'd be like 2,200 because all oh. I could do was run fast in a straight oh, wow. line. And that was day after day after day um, in 2015. That's crazy. I can't imagine running that much for one because I remember uh, – I don't know if I told the story on the podcast or not, but, like, there was this uh, – uh, the high school that I went to had a soccer team and I was like my freshman year I was trying to you know figure out what I wanted to do you know so they had the soccer tryouts right behind my house where I grew up it, it, there was a big uh, field that the one of the elementary schools had well anyway on it was a, a hill you know that was like basically 90 degrees in the air you know mm. uh, in a or 45 whatever that is right straight up right? Oh, 90 yeah. would be pretty hard to run yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so it was like yeah. it's slanted like this. Makes yeah, more yeah. Sense. Yeah, yeah 45 and so uh uh first practice were there you know and uh, they're like all right we want you to run up and down this hill as much as you can. We did this for, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes or something like that. You know, it's first day. And all right, they're like, all right, break. We're going to drink some water or whatever. And, and I go up to the coach. I was like, you know, I thought we were playing soccer. You know, uh, 
where are the balls? They didn't bring balls the first game, the first practice. They're like, no, this is just conditioning. We're training. We're running. We're running. We're running. And so I said, okay, okay. So my house was right next door. I hopped the fence to go get some water, and then everyone back. <laughs> <laughs> soccer, I was never meant to play against you in the MLS. But uh, soccer, running is such a – it's it's such a – it's something that you really have to love it or – you just are, are drawn away from it. I feel like mm. there, you know, there's, you don't find a lot of people who are like, yeah, I run sometimes you find like I run all the time. I'm able to do it. I love doing it. I never want to stop. I always go outside. And then people are like, Ugh, runners. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Interestingly enough, most of the soccer players I've been with pretty much all of them actually don't love the running part. Really? What they love is yeah, the beauty of the game type stuff in terms of like actually getting the ball and playing. And I think that's what, you know, makes the number numbers dwindle out really quickly is because you just have to, like oh. there's no choice. You got to learn to love to do it, or you got to learn to just be able to do it all the time and yeah. push yourself through when it's uncomfortable. Because yeah. otherwise, you, you just you can't have a career. It's conditioning for any pro sport. So, mm. uh, you all you have to be at a level that other people cannot reach, or at least push yourself to that level. Even if like you're like, I can't do that. I'll never do that. Like one day you might because you have the men- mental fortitude to be like, no, mm. today's not the day. But I'm going to continue to train my body. I'm continuing to run. I'm continuing to sprint. I'm continuing to you know get on that field. And then one day it just clicks for you, right? Hmm. Yeah, and exactly. And something that you got to be able to use different stuff as fuel. So, um, you know, whenever what was people, yours? Yeah. Whenever people, I mean, there's a couple. I was actually just chatting about this with someone the other day when, you know, a big one was when people tell me I couldn't do something, like you won't, uh, like you can't uh, win this mile test, or mm. like you won't, or these kind of things are going on. Like you're not going to play pro soccer. Like, what's what's your backup plan? I mean, an, another that was a, that was a big one, just in terms of extrinsic motivation was just people telling me like, hey. You can't do this. Yeah. You know, it's too hard. Well, you're pro, the pro. I mean, what year did the MLS soccer start? It was a uh, late 90s or early 2000s. Yeah, so you had to have been a young guy. I mean. Yeah, I wasn't even really following it as a kid. Yeah. Like I said, I was watching more football, and I, I didn't even yeah. know exactly what, you know, where I wanted to go. But at some point you had a vision, like, I'm going to play in pros. You were older. You were 15, 16, 17. Yeah, yeah, in high school, I was like, okay, the MLS is where I want to end up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and God carved you a path for that, which I really want to talk about now. So let's shift. So you you mentioned God and, and, and God being in your life several times at the point of this conversation. So where were you when you were introduced to the church, to God, to Jesus, and that sort of thing? Yeah. So, I mean, I was incredibly blessed to grow up in a family of believers. So my parents both encouraged and challenged me um, with with my faith. And so, you know, putting my faith in Jesus was something I did at a very young age. Um, And I had a relationship with him at a young age. But as happens, I believe with with every believer, stuff starts to creep into your life that kind of takes the place of uh, number one in your heart. (laughs) Soccer, family, comfort, like things creep in. And uh, I think God, in his kindness, uses discipline to help show us, like, hey, what are you valuing more than me? Um, and so that, that, was, that was a process, and that's even related to the injuries in college. Like, I think God was taking away everything that I would start to put my stock in more than him. Family, comfort, like other believers to rely on, and just kind of saying, hey, you, you need to rely on me because there's not going to be anything else for you to rely on in this season. That's a very mature thing to say, Kyle. Uh, people like to sit across from me and tell me how much uh, they know now, but I mm. feel like it wasn't always like that for you. Like mm. it wasn't always that simple to, you know, say that that's the, the journey. Because I feel like oftentimes when we start our journey with God, like we start at really unsure of where it's going to end up or what it's really mm. going to have an impact in our life. So you said like you grew up around believers. Your parents are really strong. What does that look like? They just take you to church. They're doing Bible studies in the house. They're talking to you about Jesus in the car. Like what does that look like? Yeah, I mean, all those things. And I think uh... – you know, now I'm getting to see and think about what does it look like to be a, a godly father? Yeah. And so I was able to just learn so much of that from my from my dad. Like you can be saved by grace. And yet as a man, you can set certain non-negotiables. This is what I'm going to be as a man. So my dad never yelled at me, never yelled at my mom, wow. you know, worked, you know, crazy hours every week, never complained. And just kind of, you know, he was definitely hard on me as a kid in terms of like being a disciplinarian like there was no give there was no budge um but there's a point in my life probably 12 or 13 where it's just a you know i just realized my parents were for my good yeah and i trusted them and then you know that changed that changes everything going into high school because then that was just this tension that a lot of high school kids have with their parents there was none of that tension there because i just trust i just trusted them um i think it works the same way with god the father is when that trust is there, then everything that he calls you to do, you realize you can read it, 
oh, you know, your command, the commandments are for our good. Yeah. And it's another thing to really have that, you know, resonate sitting in, sitting in your heart and your mind. Yeah. I, and I hate to keep sort of bringing up the differences, but I am curious. So like church in Canada, does it look the similar to church in America or church to here where you go? Yes. Similar ish. I mean, there's, I, I grew up in a smaller church, so probably a hundred, 250 people Yeah. and both the churches I got plugged into Hill city and Springfield, Missouri, Missouri, and Matthias's lot um, in St. Louis, they're bigger churches. Shout so, out. Yeah. Shout out to those <laughs> churches. Yeah, exactly. Um, they're bigger churches. So the numbers is different and uh, you know, a little bit different and then with bigger numbers, you know, the music's louder yeah. and these kind of things, but gospel oriented churches, you know, preach from the Bible, yeah. uh, these kind of things. Besides your parents, what was it uh, about your relationship with God that you appreciated? Were you like a worship guy? Were you a Bible reader? I was a Bible reader. Yeah, Bible yeah. reader. My grandpa used to pay us a dollar for every verse we remember. Really? So I used, yeah, used to, dollar Canadian. Dollar Canadian, yeah. So <laughs> w- once you convert, it's not actually worth anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, dollar Canadian. So uh, you got scripture in your heart pretty early if you're trying to make some money, huh? Yeah, exactly. Which maybe isn't, you know, theologically. But <laughs> it's all right. God's a, a blessing. Yeah, yeah. He's a blessful God. But then there, there is something to be said. Even if you do stuff for the wrong reasons, God can turn around for the good. Hey, yeah. You know, because uh-huh. then you have those verses in your heart. I've got the Roman road yeah. you know, in my heart and, you know, these kind of things, you know, different Psalms. Um, you know, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. You have that from a young age, that biblical. Yeah knowledge and, and understanding perhaps for the financial gain first and foremost <laughs> but, hey yeah. uh i've often heard uh pastors and stuff say use whatever bait you need to to mm. get someone in the door you know and i feel mm. the same way you know uh god is love and god loves us and he he wants to draw us near to him and i feel like god will use whatever method he wants to do to do that for me it was i feel like god allowed me to fall into my addiction so that i would eventually turn to him now i could have continued to stay on my path and fallen out and died that way and things like that mm. but you know like i think god and for you it was like hey i'm going to i'm going to let him make 50 bucks this this summer if he can <laughs> if he learns psalms 91 through 100 you know it's like yeah it, it's for me i think that god opens up those doors for us. But for you, I love, like, I can tell that your foundation is strong and all that. And it's so different from how I grew up, you know, like Mm. where God wasn't, I mean, I went to church as a young kid, but I, my dad died when I was 12 and I was sort of like, I prayed that I'd have a day off school and my dad died the next day. And so I was like, sort of like, Oh God, I don't know about you, man. Like Mm. sort of, sort of pushed him off until 20 years later and I'm in the depth of my addiction and I call out to me, shows up and he's changed my life ever since. But for somebody like you, where, you know, from basically the day you were born, you've been instilled with values and scripture to guide your life. And even as a young boy, you're, you're looking to him to sort of, what am I supposed to do? God, he puts this, this love of soccer in your heart and, Mm -hmm. and also the skills to be good enough at it, to continue moving down the path that you need to move on. Did you real, like, I, I can't imagine that was easy to realize in the moment that God was, you know, giving you such a good foundation was everybody around you like this? Were you like an outlier? Yeah, no, I was, I was a pretty big outlier. I think yeah. as a kid, I, um, yeah, I remember j- just, I mean, no, not, maybe not necessarily with maturity and in, in faith. Like that was, you know, different kids in my church and stuff would have, you know, the same kind of love for, for Jesus, but just different in terms of kind of the way I approached sports. Um, you know, you know, in terms of my, kind of discipline from a young age but i enjoyed it right so yeah. it wasn't like it was like oh i gotta go run like i used to actually love running so yeah. you know these kind of things um but yeah no i was i was definitely a different kid yeah yeah the idea that you are able to combine your faith and your your love for soccer is one that you know some people are like well if if you love god you've got to get called into ministry and these kinds of things you know you, you've maybe heard things like this but mm. for you i feel like god calls us to be a salt and light wherever we are you know and i can i think even the pastor at my church was in the nfl so it's like i've seen people walk in different avenues of life who were able to share their faith and do things so what's it been like for you you know in your journey to be able to share your faith with other people that you're surrounded by yeah i mean so i would uh, same as you i would push back on the notion that like if you love God, you have to be called into vocational ministry. Right, yep. Like I do strongly believe my wife and I are in ministry right now yeah. with this team that we have with their families, um, loving on them. And so it's kind of a uh, getting to see as we go back to when I was seven or something, God put down my heart. And then, you know, 18 years later, every opportunity, like right now that I get to share my faith and my story or whether with 
kids or whether it's loving on my teammates or whether it's just God giving a platform or even financial resources to be able to bless people, whatever it is, um, like I know that that's because of the plan God had all those years ago. And uh, there was even one moment Cass and I shared where it was just like this was what God had been laying on my heart all these years. And it just opened up. I was like, this is it. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is one big one right here. And boom. You know, and so God's just been there, there's so many opportunities to use this platform yeah. to share about Jesus is. So the people that you've encountered, uh, are they typically more saved, unsaved? Like, I don't know what the culture is around soccer. Hmm. Yeah, I'd say pro sports. I mean, there's a lot. You, you know, I mean, you think pro sports and you think, well, money, power, yeah. fame. And you think, OK, what are what are some of the what's the most dangerous thing to keep oh, pe- pe- yeah. people away from Jesus? Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, there's a lot of desire for those um, in pro sports. And but crazy enough, we end up with a team. We have a, a team chaplain, which I'd never had before in my life. And we have a team. Bible Explain what a chaplain is for chaplain. It's, it's like a, a guy who's a volunteers to just pray on and love guys on our team. And we do a once a week Bible study, which I've never experienced led by someone else, which in college I was praying and ended up getting one going. Um, like, but it took like three years or that something you led. that I led. Yeah, yeah. I've never had one where it's like, this guy's going to lead the, the Bible study and just, just a great humble down earth guy. You know, the non-believers, the believers, like he's like, but he's open about it. Hey, I'm yeah. praying for you guys, you know, and he'll say, Here, here's what I'm praying for you to believers or non-believers, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. So, uh, I have, uh, a history of being able to talk to people who are in pro sports for some books and things that I've written. And I, and I love the chaplain relationship because I, 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 I know several chaplains i've talked to them and mm. and you know you even get celebrity chaplains you know celebrity to use a phrase right but like no notable people who come in maybe you know they pastor a big church or something like that and they'll come in and do chaplain sessions for pro basketball but this is something that happens across pro sports so like you know day game if you're having a game you know earlier that day there's an opportunity for the players to go to church especially on sundays they'll have these opportunities uh for players to have you know because they're not able to go to church that morning, you know, mm-hmm. so they yeah. have these opportunities. And so that, uh, since you're in the pro sports and now you've, you've seen it for the first time for yourself, is this, is what, I guess, is this making an impact on people? Are people coming to this or is it sort of like you showed up with your Bible and like, you're the first person and you're it? No, no, p- people are coming. We've had guys coming and then, you know, we were praying for God to looking back on the year, our chaplain even said, even think about all the prayer requests that have been answered this year. And so there's a bunch for me individually, but for us as a team, um, I was like, God, you know, do a work on this team by bringing in more believers. And I got to see one of my closest friends become a believer a couple months ago. Wow. Uh, And then, so I got to see God work from the inside out. And then God also worked from the outside in, bringing in like a big time German player named, uh, named Edward who loves Jesus. Wow. So you got, you got a teammate. In, in, in the spiritual realm and on the physical uh, soccer team. <laughs> exactly, yeah, a couple of different teammates. But even from the beginning yeah. of the year, a couple of us in the Bible study praying for that, we got to see this guy, um, Michael, come to faith and then yeah. also, you know, kind of from within and then got to see God bring in someone um, from the outside. And, you know, me, Michael, and Edward all go to the same church, yeah. Matthias Lot, and the same small group. It's the same Bible study. So just get to get to do life together, Yeah, uh, which is really special. I think that's probably unusual in pro sports for teammates to be so closely connected outside of the games, right? I think so. I mean, again, my first experience this year, but just even hearing about the way it is in Europe. So there's, I mean, you just think about it or even guys come on trial. Like, oh, you're going on trial. Like, oh, very cool with this team. But everyone who goes on trial. Like a trial with the team. A trial with the team. Everyone on the team recognizes they're there to take your job. And so there's a lot of oh, like yeah. not kind of love for each other or just kind of falseness I've heard from guys where it's like they'll just pretend to be your friends or even within the scope of the team. Like if you're the same position, then there's this animosity or this bitterness when someone will play over you and kind of how do you manage that as a coach and then also as players. And I think that's a big thing for me for next year where it's like now I get to be on the first team and either one of two things is going to happen. Either, either I'm going to play a bunch or I'm not. If I play a bunch, I've got this incredible platform that's even bigger than it was this year to share about Jesus. Yeah. And if I don't play a lot, I've got an incredible opportunity to be different in terms of that I'm not going to be bitter, that I'm going to love and support the guys yeah. playing in front of me. Yeah. And either way, it, it's an opportunity. You that's know? so good, Kyle, because it's like God created you. And I, this is what I see in your life right now is that God created a leader, right? Hmm. So he's created a leader 
from the very beginning, he's poured into you what he wanted, how he wanted leadership to be example when he put you in this position, hmm. because had he, had he put you in the process, you know, like if you would have walked on the team, for instance, you know, like last year and all of a sudden just been good enough to get, you know, it's like hmm. you wouldn't have that foundation of like doing the, you know, traveling and doing these different things and living in different conditions and, and seeing all different types of part of the world and being able to understand that like, this is different from what I'm used to because co- soccer brings a lot of people from different areas of life together. And so you're able to sort of navigate that and, and encourage them. And, and he also puts you in a marriage. You mentioned cast several times Cass mm. uh for full disclosure here so kyle and i married into the same family okay <laughs> so uh kyle and i uh either, even though you're more of a newlywed into the family than i am that's how we know each other and so Cass came along and you're you're married at a young age in your early 20s and most of the guys on your team are not married so i see mm. you as a leader like you're sort of leading the way for all these guys who are coming in either behind you or next to you for you to be that salt and light right where you're meant to be, which is amazing because even for the single guys, you can be there, there, you know, there, what's it like to be married? And you know, what do you, what, how do you walk that road as a Christian? Like there's mm. so many different places for you. Do you find that that's, uh, uh, areas where God's able to have you, you know, minister, basically minister to these guys, right? Yeah. So, I mean, a couple of different things kind of come up. One is we've had more of like the, our big time players that they've brought in from Europe for the first team, more of those guys are married. And so it's a really cool opportunity where, you know, we moved to St. Louis, but before we were going to get married, I told Cass, I want to do the pro soccer thing. Are you willing to go with me wherever we go? That's a good, okay. And at that point, there was no team in St. Louis. So I said, it's not Ooh. going to be at St. Louis with your family. I mean, there's no pro team there. Uh, no MLS team. There was a USL team, but I was trying to go MLS. So it's like, it's going to be somewhere across North America. And she said, yeah, I'm in. And then St. Louis ends up coming and we end up getting to go to St. Louis as the first team that called me wow. out of college. Um, but then in terms of now with, with guys on the team, especially the married guys who have come in, you think they come in and their wives, they, they don't know anybody. So they come in, their husband is the man, he's the star, maybe people recognize them, whatnot, you know, does the interviews. And then their wives, you know, it's, I think it would be very easy for them to be neglected or not seen. And we've just had the incredible privilege of getting to spend time with some of our married guys on our team yeah. who, I mean, they're a lot of fun to spend time with. So it's like, well, it's ministry. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to, almost hard, hard to call it ministry sure. when we invite. It's relationships. It's relationships, yeah. cause, and, we, and we love doing it. Yeah. So it's like we're called to do – it's just cool. We're, we're being called to do something we love to do. So we get to, I get to see Cass do a fantastic job. Yeah. I mean, she'll just make food for people and make them feel loved and at home. And I mean, I can't cook, so it's like, <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't happen. Uh, I want to back up something because uh, I think you have some insight into, you know, a young person's marriage that – maybe be relevant to this conversation. Mm-hmm. So you had mentioned that sort of, you had a conversation with Cass about like, look, I feel like God's called me to do this. I don't know. I don't know where it's going to take me. Mm-hmm. And part of your story that you have not shared yet. And that I think is important to this conversation when you're talking about God's vision for your life, God's plan for your life and how to navigate that is that while you were in college, you weren't just pursuing this, uh, soccer dream the soccer vision without a net like you went to school and you're a very smart guy and so tell us tell us what else you did while you were in school <laughs> yeah so i mean well i had i kind of had three bonus years because i talked yeah. about well, 2015 i was injured all i could do was run a straight line well then 2016 came around i was a starter through the spring which isn't the real season and our second last preseason game so a week before the season starts i tear the pcl on my right knee so now Sorry. i'm so now i'm missing a second year and you know still struggling for church family and community still no believers on the team was that hard that was really hard i ended up uh part of my story is like all this this competitive outlet with soccer i didn't have and i think jesus was trying to call me to him yeah and said i ended up playing a lot of poker i started playing poker like crazy yeah multiple times with guys and i thought i'm gonna write down each time how much money i made or lost so i can kind of track this and you know through weeks or months it's like oh i'm i'm making money you know so it's like but something felt wrong. Like, you know, it just didn't feel right. I think it's because that's, I was just, okay. And identity was in soccer. Now soccer's taken away for the second time. God's like, yeah. I'm calling you, you know, really put your identity in me. And it's like, well, I'm going to put it in poker, Yeah, you know, and I'm winning Been there and now I'm winning in poker and you know, I'm, I'm doing good. And, and it was actually, we're a couple months into playing yeah. and you know, all the guys I play with, they're smoking and drinking. And here I am, I, I bring, we play for like six or eight hours at a time. Sure. So I'll bring, 
like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with a chewy bar. <laughs> Quit it. And I got Quit my... <laughs> I brought a chewy bar. I, I brought my water bottle. Yeah, I mean, just playing with friends. Yeah, right? sure. Yeah, yeah. Not, but everybody else has got a six pack and a, you know, a yeah. pack of cigarettes or whatever. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so you're set up at the poker table with your water and you're like, hey guys, deal me in. And everybody's like, what? What, is Kyle here? <laughs> and then one of the guys ends up, we're talking and like my faith comes up. You know, yeah. well, why don't you drink or smoke it? My faith comes up. Yeah. And he just looks at me and says, what are you doing here? playing poker with us huh. you know it's kind of hit me what, what am i doing here yeah you know and just kind of i want to be very careful because you can play card games with people and I, you know especially sure. when it comes but with money it's just hard because very easily you can just be it can go down the wrong yeah well proverbs has uh i think six verses on the fact that like money won hastily leads to ruin so mm. <laughs> regardless of what, how, how much that amount is that's just uh... i'd make like 20 bucks <laughs> playing eight hours so <laughs> it was not hastily but yeah it was still it was still you know there's a verse where if you if you do anything you you know you know is wrong or you know the spirit's leading like it's sin yeah and the spirit was leading me away from that yeah um but that was 2016 i end up kind of leaving the poker scene and all the while, I've been trying to get plugged into a church. And I get plugged into a church in a small group. And so that's kind of where, you know, I then start to put m- more of my identity is, is in that. Yeah. Um, so uh, I want to draw back to the question. So uh, mm-hmm. y- you, were, you were going to school. So I do want to uh, – so people are always like, John, you don't finish your question. So, uh, here, yeah, you know, I realized <laughs> I didn't answer your question. Yes. Yeah, I take so, responsibility. And that's okay, but I, I, we need to tug on this thread. That's the mm. – I, I just, just put, a, put a bit of my first question, and we're going to continue on the second question for a second. Mm. So you, you had hardships that sort of led you into areas of your life that you didn't see coming, right? So whether it was poker or just being injured or whatever it was. And those hardships, I imagine at some point you had a get-on-your-knees moment or like, God, what's going on, or cry out, or what, what, what happened? Yeah, I mean, lots of, I think there was a decent amount of that with lots of tears, you yeah. know, crying out to God, like, this is not... Ah, this Were not you what... worried? Were you like, I'm going to go back to Canada, or I'm going to go back to mom, figure out... Um, you can go ahead. <laughs> yeah, sorry, <laughs> something in my throat. No, I never really thought about quitting. Um, I thought, you know, I was always going to... The only time I actually really considered it, you know, I was calling out to God, but consider going, like, I don't know if I can do the soccer thing, was I, after fall 2016, I'm injured for the second time, and I'm playing in the spring 2017, and my knee is hurting every single practice all the time. So I'm just playing through pain for weeks and months. And I thought, ah, oh, man, you know, this would be a long college and pro career to, to keep doing this. Fortunately, it got better and better slowly, very slowly. Uh, but no, never considered quitting or leaving. Yeah. It still had that desire you know i want to get a chance to be on the field i want to i want to play so besides the conviction that sort of led you away from poker what was the moment that you really solidified that like okay god is with me you know he didn't abandon me in my injury he didn't you know uh send me down a path i shouldn't be on hmm. especially reflecting back yeah. um romans eight twenty eight says god causes all things to work together for the good yeah. of those who are called according to his purpose and so I get to see, well, 2015 and 2016, I missed due to injury, and it's painful and it's hard in the midst of that. And then there's a COVID year in the midst of that, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. Where yeah. the NCAA 2020, the fall season gets canceled. The NCAA says, we don't know what this season will look like in the spring of 21. So everyone just gets an extra year. So I had three extra years. <laughs> that's crazy. So 2019. <laughs> 20, I hope you weren't paying for this. <laughs> no, fortunately, I uh, got it covered with scholarship, which was nice. Thank you, Missouri State. Amen. Men's soccer. Um, so 2019, 2021, spring, 2021, fall, I had three seasons. Um, and then 2019, 2020, 2021, everything that happened in there was outside of my original plan when I was going off to university. So I got to yeah. say anything that happened in that time window um, was God's plan, which was, which was uh, so much did. So we had, yeah. we had got a Bible study going with our team. We went through the whole book of Matthew. I got to baptize two teammates. That's and see awesome. Him, see him come to <laughs> That's faith. So cool. I got to meet Cass, my yeah. future wife. Yeah. And, uh, we get married in December 18th, 2020. And I start the green card process in 2021. And I get my green card at the end of 2021, which is especially relevant because MLS teams have an international cap. So there's only a certain number of international guys allowed on the team. And we brought in all, St. Louis brought in all the international guys from Europe. So they could sign me because I count as American. Ah! So, so God intertwines <laughs> Cass into that plan. You can't make this kind of stuff up. And like my dream to play on this team wouldn't come so to good. fruition unless I was married with a green card. So good. That was number two. And then, and then number three, and 
least importantly, but 2019 was Missouri State's kind of – we burst onto the scene, the national scene of soccer. We went 16-0 to in the regular season. Wow. Went to the NCAA tournament, won our first NCAA tournament game, went back again in 2021, went to the Sweet 16, and went back to the NCAA tournament in the fall of 2021. So, like, the three best years in program history. So I'm coming off of that. And then be, because of, you know, a lot of that team success – me and some other guys received a decent amount of individual recognition, which we needed because typically MLS teams and pro teams pull from, you know, bigger name schools, not Missouri yeah. State. So because of that, we got that recognition. So when our season ends in fall of 2021, uh, what do we do? And people say, oh, did you reach out and stuff? If you have to call the pro team and say, hey, will you sign me? It's, it's not going to work out. They, they got to come to you. Yeah. So you got to have that patience. Um, and St. Louis called. Um, and we got to come here, which was really special. The amount of miracles that your story just shared. Mm -hmm. I, people don't miss this. Like, when you are walking in God's plan for your life, no matter what it looks like, you just mentioned Romans 8, 28. There are moments where it looks, I mean, th this is every story in the Bible, right? Like, mm. Abraham, go where I get to call you. And he's like, go where? <laughs> like, and he ends up in three different places. Like, he ends up all over Egypt. And, and it, you know, it's like, no, I build a boat. But what's a boat? You know, it's like, you don't really know where this plan is going, right? You just mm. take steps of faith. And for you, it was like, God's gifted me with soccer. I'm going to walk down this road. And I'm in college, Lord. Things... I'm injured, you know, and then the trouble start. And then, and then you sort of find yourself sort of like, you weren't really like this, but a prodigal son, like I'm going, I'm going right when I should be going left, you know, mm. sort of thing. But then God, but then God, you just stay faithful. You stay, stay as best you can close to him, right? God stays faithful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a good word. So you, yeah. God stays close to you because God loves us. God draws us near to him. Yeah. Even if we're trying to run from us, he's just patient with yeah. us, right? To wait for us to come back to him. Mm. And uh, so you, you come back and, and then God just unloads heaven of blessings on you. He puts you in this delay injury, which you probably at the time felt like this is it. This is never going to work out. This is going to be, you know, I'll never get to be full strength again or whatever, mm. whatever the thoughts were yeah, that were running yeah. through your head. Right. Yeah. And because of that moment, those moments, you're set up to get a wife. You're set up to see salvation happen in your friend group. Mm. You're set up to disciple other people who are around you. You are set up. Uh, your entire future is set up because your leg hurt. You know uh, twice. twice. Yeah, twice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, and in the moment, you're like, there's no way this can work out for my good. But God. But God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why it's so fun just to reflect back. Yeah. You know, and just get to see the work that he did, you know, through. And he, he was doing it. You know, God is not limited. You can say, oh, was God disciplining me because, you know, my identity was maybe in soccer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. Was God... So you had some of that pride that you talked about the, earlier mm. that, that some players might come in with, like, I'm looking for money. I'm looking for these these things to f fulfill me. You, mm. And he was trying to break some of that off you, it sounds like. Yeah, pro more so pride, I think, just in my okay. soccer playing ability. Oh, you know, I got you. I could like kind of be... I, I did this. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I could kind of go on this. And God's, you know, now there's no way to look back. And I was like, oh, this was me. You know, there's no way for me to which I think God does that all through the Bible where he's very intentional. You know, when we look at the people he calls, you know, Paul writes the majority of the new Testament. It's like, well, Paul was not this good guy before yeah. he's going around killing Christians. Right. So it's like, so there's no way <laughs> for us to read as a believer about Paul and think like, Oh, Paul had it all figured out before. Well, yeah. well that's very clearly evident. He did not. And that's just one story. It's every other story like that. Exactly in the Bible right. When you look at it. Yeah. yeah. So while you're in school, you also get an accounting degree, correct? Yeah. So then I get to stay this in school. It's like your backup plan. <laughs> stay in school. Yeah. So all the, all the while people would say, oh, you need a good backup plan. And I was like, oh, and I'm going to play pro soccer as a kid. And I end up with <laughs> the best backup plan because yeah. I'm in school for six and a half years. I get my major in accounting. And then I get my which is no slouch thing to get mm. either. <laughs> like accounting is not some like walk off the bus, you know, take a couple of classes and, and graduate sort of deal. Like you, you, that's hard work, hard mental. Like that's mm. I, I, I commend you for being able to to do all that plus soccer mm. at a high level. Sixteen and zero, that's very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean most most of the guys on the team or in a, across college athletics are there for the athletics. Yeah, and you know, search out a major that allows them to do athletics um, and then also kind of socialize and, Coast and, and, yeah, bit, and, yeah. and do those kind of things. Cause athletics is a dream. Of course it is. Um, and so looking back on it, it's like, I did give up my social life in college at times, just in terms of, I remember coming back and my roommates always be watching a movie or something. And for so long, I was never, never able to do that. Well, I've got to study, you know, yeah. I've got to do this. So I got my majors in, 
major in accounting. Then I went and got my master's in accounting and I ended up with a couple. And then COVID hit and I had oh. my master's already. So I'm like, what do I do now? So I got- What I do now? <laughs> additional certificate in accounting. Um, so, Kyle, yeah. you are an overachiever if I've ever met one. Uh, I'm not going to just play soccer. I'm going to play professional soccer. I'm not just going to get be an accountant. I'm going to be the world's best accountant. I'm, oh, I'm, no, I'm nowhere near the <laughs> world's best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and again, I'm not saying this because you're prideful. I'm like, I am so mm -hmm. impressed by uh, what God has done in your life to allow you to have the tenacity because I can't imagine what it's like you know, to be a, you know, successful soccer player in college where you're being drawn into all sorts of different areas of life where you could easily just be a type of person like we see across, like you said, co collegiate sports mm. where you're drawn into just, I want to party. I just want to relax because I spent the 12 hours of my day practicing, weightlifting, running, jogging, doing all these different things for my mm. body. And now I want to chill out. And you're like, you know what? I can't even watch a movie because I got to study for my final or <laughs> whatever it is. Like yeah, it takes yeah. a lot. Yeah, no, it, it, it was a lot looking back um, and to try to do that without God, you know, there's points was like really leaning in on God. Yeah. And then I could just kind of recognize, you know, he made those moments um, enjoyable. How did, I mean, did he? Because I feel like you said you didn't have a big community. So like at the start, yeah, oh, okay. at the start. Yeah. So the first year, year and a half, you were sort of, and then wondering. I, and then I got plugged in yeah. to a really great church and a really great community small group um every week um so god i ended up i ended up with that but i yeah. think and that's where you met cassia church at church yeah, yeah yeah through that church and so now i was super well we ended up we had a saturday sunday off so we ended up back in springfield missouri this weekend and we got to revisit the church we hadn't been to in months and see a lot of old friends yeah. and just see that you know people i had such great relationships um, at hill city and in springfield yeah your story, man, I think it's going to inspire so many people. And I think it's one of the reasons, I, you know, God's made you a leader on this team you're on. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Is, is to continue to push you into spots that I don't know if you're entirely comfortable sharing or if you're a talker normally. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know that that kind of life about you. But what I feel like when you when you are asked to speak to someone, whether it's privately or in public, like your faith is at the forefront of your conversations. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because God has, you know, yeah. given me so much and this is what. I was praying for, yeah. you know, um, and so that's, that is number one in my life. With that being said, there's still as other stuff still tries to creep in, right? It's yeah. not like, Oh, Oh, God showed me my identity needs to be in him. Now it's in him. It's easy. I'll never, you know, put yeah. anything else, replace him on the throne. It's like, no, it's, it's this constant. And that's why like, Oh, is believing in Jesus a, a point in time or is it a process of time? And I would say, yes, <laughs> I love it. You know, yes. Like it's a point in time. <laughs> As a kid, I make this decision to follow Jesus. Yeah. Or in college, I realize my identity has been elsewhere, and I'm going to put it in Jesus. But it's also a process because still pride can creep in. Still sure. pride, sorry, does creep in. Still bitterness does creep in. You know, still these you know thoughts or things that I'll do, and I'll try to be this leader on this team. And I remember in college feeling like, oh, I failed when I got really angry and I said some stuff I shouldn't uh -huh. have said. And then I got to see, I was talking, actually, that was when I had community with people. I said, I feel like I've just let everyone down. I feel like I let God down, my teammates down. I was not a light for Christ at all wow. this week. Yeah. And then talking with some people, I showed me, actually, that can make your light be even brighter because you can show people, hey, I don't have it all together. Yeah. And now I've got specific examples to draw on. Like, hey, you know, I'm messed up in a sinner because they would always see like, oh, Kyle, you know, perfect little Kyle. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, water drinking, like yeah, water chewy drinking, <laughs> chewy bar eating, you know, working hard in soccer, working hard in school. Yeah. It's like, no, like I'm, I'm messed up. And now you guys like we're there for, I can do it this time, this time or this time. And so yeah. God ends up then using, you know, my weakness. And that's why we allow, you know, the Bible says for us to boast in our weakness. Yeah. Because like, if I did have it all figured out, even after putting my identity in Jesus, then my advice to people would be, you need to figure it all out. But that's not my advice. Yeah. Like, you need to rely on Jesus and you don't have to figure out anything before you do that. You can do that right now, you know, and I'm not perfect. And here are all the examples and things I've said and things I've thought, you know, that you've been around for yeah. that now I can show you and share with you. Yeah. Um, that relationship equity. Hmm. You know, that you, especially like the closeness of a professional team or any, or any team really, hmm. like you spend a lot of time on buses together, you know, in locker rooms, you know, eating lunch together before the game, whatever it looks like you have 
consistent relational equity hmm. that you're able to use to then, even if you don't have to like be like, all right, guys, look here at Matthew 16, 14 or whatever. You're like, you can just use your life is, and like you said, the examples of what you've gone through, good and bad yeah. to, to be, you know, that salt and light. And so what I'm curious about, and so, you know, you haven't walked in the season yet, but uh, there are stories throughout sports of guys, you know, doing all sorts of stuff, you know, like going to the bar after the games to try and unwind. And so like, you know, or, or finding women on the road or, you know, you hear these types of like negative stories that get public, you know, and like mm-hmm. scandals and things like that, you know? So like when you're in soccer, you know, you mentioned the chaplain and things. And, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because I want to know, like, are they setting something up in place for, you know, accountability or would you have something you have to do for yourself to sort of like make sure that now that you're a professional, now that you're going to start playing, prof- now you're going to be traveling all across the country, playing soccer games in these big stadiums and uh, everybody's going to be wanting your attention and, you know, and your life is about to change in a way that you maybe don't even understand yet, you know? Mm-hmm. What 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 are you praying for right now in the season? What are you hoping to see, or is or or is like the chaplain and things like that, like helping you with those sort of conversations? Yeah, are you are you asking about like just you know, the personal temptation that will come no on no? The road I, or, I mean, I'm, just, I guess I'm trying to be broad about it, but you know, specifically, I I want to know one: does the chaplain or the people who are on the team are they like? Is there any sort of program or anything that they're doing to like? help with guys sort of managing their celebrity or, you know, their notoriety and things like that. Cause I don't know what it's like. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I mean, I mean, Jim, Jim's his name, um, our, our chaplain and he's there for any type of, of prayer request yeah. um, for guys. And, and you can kind of see like we've had some bigger name guys come from Europe where especially in Germany, a soccer crazed country. Yeah. And he's like, you can't even go to dinner with your family, right. or your friends without people wanting your autographs or these kind of things. And it's not to the same level in St. Louis, even for them. Yeah. And so they're, uh, no, 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 even for them now. And they come oh. in like people, like it's not quite the same in terms of how nuts it is. It's not oh, quite the you. same as like you think if you see LeBron James, like it, he gets it, mobbed. Right. Yeah. yeah. He, he's going to get mobbed and there's going to be you know, more attention, yeah. but it's not going to be, or at least I don't believe it's going to be because yeah. we already have those guys on our team who it's like, these guys are, you know, celebrities to a degree. Yeah. Um, and they can still kind of live normal lives. Now they'll be more, get more attention on. So them maybe it's not as bad as LeBron. Yeah, but not not nearly, not <laughs> even close. Yeah, but but there still might be avenues of temptation. What, what mm. whatever that temptation is, you know, like drugs. I don't know. I don't like. I don't know what kind of like things are out there in the celebrity world or you know the notoriety world, the sports world that you know they're just. I don't even think about, you know, but those things might be temptations for you. Uh, do you just stay accountable with friends on the road, your church? Like, what what, what do you think you're going to be doing? Yeah, I mean, I think I'll even touch on that with my dad growing up. Like I yeah. said, my dad, you know, saved by grace, but yet you can set non-negotiables as a man, as a father, as a husband. Yeah. And if you set your non-negotiable, like, um, you know, you give yourself a lot of breathing room. It's like then you can really open the door for temptation. Yeah. But if you set your non-negotiable for, hey, if, you know, uh, a girl or a female reaches out to me via text or Facebook, whatever it is. Like immediately something like that, I would show cast and say, hey, this happened or, you know what I mean? Anything like that. And you set your... That's so smart. Or yeah. just, just in terms of like not being alone, you know, together with, with someone of the opposite gender, those kind of things. If you set those at a certain level, then you've, you, you've given yourself um, freedom that you don't, you know, have to go down that road, which does lead to emptiness. Yeah. You know? hiding stuff and you know mm. like you know maybe you went to the hotel bar after a game you know and, and had a few and it's easy to just say uh, i don't even tell cast about this or anybody you're like mm. <laughs> you know like the boys went out i went out with them you know that sort of thing you know and uh, trying to like non-negotiables that's such a good way to do it is it hard for you to stick to whatever your non-negotiables might be so i mean interestingly enough you yeah. bring up the drinking thing i've never had a temptation for, really? for drinking oh, oh. or getting drunk or anything like that but i went with the guys after we lost um, our final to Columbus. Oh, in Columbus. sad day. Sad. Da, da, da. So you guys went to explain what happened. So you guys went to the championship game of your yeah MLS Next Pro. So we yeah. were you know vying to be the the best MLS two team, and there was you know especially which is like the the tri- AAA of soccer, right? Correct. To use a yeah. phrase, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And then after that game, like the season was over, um, and so I ended up going. I was with my parents for a couple hours because they flew out to Columbus. And they ended up going to the bar with the guys just to spend time with them. Yeah. Um, but the the drinking thing has never been 
like a big temptation. Yeah. Well, how yeah. sad. I mean, what was it like to play first? You play in your first like pro real championship game, right? Mm. And, yeah. And you guys have been. You guys were so good during the regular season. You guys won several playoff games. Yeah. Like you're riding that high, right? What was it like for you in that before even before the loss? Like, what was that like? Yeah. I mean, that was just really cool. We were in the stadium. I don't know how many. Um, you know, five or six or seven thousand people there. It's it's super noisy. You know, there's smoke. These kind of things. Yeah. Um, and it was, yeah, for sure, the biggest game of my career so far. Um, and so because of that, it was just a really, it would have been, yeah, I want to say special moment, but we lost. So, yeah. you know, it's kind of like there's a sting, this bitter, bittersweet. Yeah. Uh, but even then after the game, the coaching staff, you know, we have a fantastic coaching staff, was, was so upbeat about the year that we've had. Yeah. You, know, they, you guys accomplished so much um, to get to get to this point, to be one of the two last team standing and you know hats off to columbus yeah. you know for winning that game so uh how long do you think so like i, I know that the contracts and things are not usually open discussed but do, like are you going to be in st louis for a certain amount of time like or like what's your how long do you think you'll be sticking around or playing yeah so i'm on a two-year deal right now yeah. starting in 2023 so it runs through 2024 with that being said contracts are always open for renegotiation they can trade you or anything they can trade me if they yeah. choose to yeah so there is no guarantee that um st louis will be our home, home for yeah. however amount of time we we don't know yeah. yeah but you had a plan that you walked through in advance through discussions with Cass. i love that so don't miss this young married couples like talk to your spouse mm. make plans before they're uh, your spouse yeah, 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 yeah before yeah, they're, they're your spouse they're and your even spouse. even during say look hey i've got to go on the road if anybody texts me i'm going to show you and i'm just like mm. set up set up whatever the areas of your life is for conversation <laughs> communication is very key mm. to uh, a long marriage so i just want to put that out there for everybody but uh you might get traded you might get drafted but uh for the sh for the time being if all things work out you're going to spend at least two years in st louis playing on the pro team and man uh are you excited man i mean you haven't played your first pro pro game in the stadium but are you just pumped or what yeah we're actually playing our first it's an exhibition game it's in the yeah. stadium against a big time german team on november 16th okay coming up a few weeks yeah so i imagine it'll be like twenty two and a half thousand people there holy moly um, are you nervous <laughs> like, I'm so nervous. not right now though i'm just <laughs> yeah. i'm just excited yeah yeah, yeah just because you're just it's just normal right that's what uh, my pastor says he's just like look i practice like people are just coming to watch me do what i do at practice that's mm. all it is no there definitely be nerves you know especially yeah. closer to the game and right before the game and stuff and we actually have kind of mental coaches and they'll say you know when you're nervous like that's a good thing yeah. you know you know you People say, ah, you know, you don't get nervous, but especially at the beginning, there's nerves, but just you say you're nervous because you're excited. Yeah. So you just translate, no, I'm not nervous, I'm excited. And another thing that they would help me do too is, you know, before those games, like, oh, I really don't want to make a big time mistake. <laughs> you know what I mean? You start to fixate, yeah. like, I don't want to mess up, I don't want to mess up. And I played a couple years like that through high school where it's like, I, I knew how I played was so important and I knew I needed to not mess up. And you play with fear and it take, it steals the joy from the game. Yeah. Um, because I'm gonna mess up, you know what I mean? Of course, yeah. Field. It's about getting back up and yeah, yeah. So it's like, how do you how do you respond? So it's instead of before a game, if I think ah, oh, I might mess up, and I tell myself, no, I'm going to, but then how am I gonna respond? God, uh, I think God gives us that sort of anxiety, and anxiety may not be the right word. That uh, you know, the, the butterflies and the mm. things that you, you know, the nerves that we have before something like it's out outside of our comfort zone. It's a little bit bigger than we're used to. Maybe we're not, you know. We have to rely on him. Like it's mm. it's our reminder. Hey, look, I, I got this for you, but don't just think you got this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This saying God doesn't give you more than you can handle. I don't mm. believe God does. <laughs> so that you have to rely on him. Yeah, yeah. So good. All right, Kyle. Well, I appreciate you sharing some of your story with us today. I appreciate uh, all the testimonies you've got, man. You're going to be such a blessing to so many people you encounter. So many people who are going to, you know talk to you like i'm talking to you in the future whether it's uh the television or the media or whoever's talking to you uh i know that it's not just gonna be about like uh why'd you why'd you get that yellow card it's gonna be about you know the foundation of you using what god's put inside your heart leadership uh the ability to clearly communicate uh to understand where you came from and who created you mm -hmm. and why you're created to share that with others in a way that like i i like talking to you because like you you put god you sort of slip him in there you know what I'm saying? like yeah. you're you have no problem just being like well you know when i was in my bible study and like like you mm -hmm. know like uh it's very uh you have the ability when i've seen you talk to people to sort of like 
people get calm around you. Like they're not, uh, you know, you're able to talk to them very freely, very openly. And I think that that's going to be a big tool to how God uses you in this season of your life. And so I just wanted to say that about you uh, so you can hear that and know that God has got a big plan for you, not just in soccer, but how he's going to use you to, you know, we, we don't use word minister. We're going to say relationships. You're going to use your relationships with the soccer world to really change a lot of people. I really believe that. And I see that all over your life, man. So uh, congratulations on your, uh, promotion what we call it on your, your signing yeah. <laughs> to the the pro team but uh man thanks so much for being here today yeah thanks so much for having me on john awesome all right guys that's going to do it for today's episode of the new john simmons show uh if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and don't forget that uh, we have lots of other uh interviews testimonials and videos up on this youtube channel that you can watch anytime including right now uh but until then we pray that you discover a future and a hope for your life today <laughs>